In this tutorial, you are going to learn how to take a picture like this and extract someone from the picture using Jimic, using an interactive tool to extract the foreground and the background, to separate the two in a picture. We are going to do that from Krita, but note that Jimic is available in GIMP as well as plugins in GIMP and Krita and as a standalone application. You can use that to then have your picture in YouTube thumbnails. So this is the new design by Nick, who's working on our thumbnails. And uh, the thing is that the pictures we have there is not the highest quality. So I want to extract a few copies of myself with better lighting. You can then use that to have also new profile pictures. You put some blurred image in the background and there you go. Jimic being a plugin, you'll need it installed to follow this tutorial. So link in the description to learn how to do that. Now let's get started. Open your picture in the program. I've done so. Select the layer that contains the picture you want to extract and go to filter, start Jimic Cute. It's selecting the filter that we need because I used it on the previous document, but go to the search bar and type foreground to find it. It's under the controls category. Select the filter. We have two sliders we could play with, but as well using Krita, we don't really need to. These are feathering, softening the edge of the extracted picture after applying the filter. We can do that after the fact in a program like Krita or GIMP. Dilation would expand or shrink the extracted selection. There again, we can do that anytime with Krita. So we want to straight click on OK. Note that you have a list of the interactions, the keyboard shortcuts you can use with this filter on the right. You're going to see why. When we click OK, a window like this is going to pop up. This is the window you will use to extract the foreground from the background. You can see dots on my version of the, the picture, you might not have them. Keep the backspace key down to remove them, to remove the last point added. If I had them, it's because I've worked on a previous document. I've already used the filter in this session. And so Jimic remembers what I've done with it. Now we need to tell the filter what is the foreground of the image and what is the background. For the foreground, you can left click on the character in this case. And for the background, you will right click, creating respectively green circles, red circles. You can press the space bar to update the result, to look at what Jimic generates for you. You can see that it's pretty good already because the background is mostly uniform. I can see that I'm missing a little bit of my beautiful mustache here. I'm going to add a dot here, press space again, and you can see it updates instantly. Sometimes you have to add a few and a background dot as well. I need a few under the nose, I think. Something like that, yeah. If uh, you want to improve an area of your picture, you will hold the control key down and use the up key to zoom in, down key to zoom out. You can middle mouse click to pan around the picture and use control left and right as well to navigate horizontally on your image. It seems to be pretty good already. Luckily for this image, it's work. It's working pretty well. Sometimes you'll have to add some more red dots like these. And let's see if I can. Yeah, I could remove that little gray area. I can spot one here. It's a bit difficult to see. So we're going to change the background preview mode can press tab to do that. Then you can see a little more of, you know, this blob of gray pixels that the filter did not pick up. So left click on the neck, right click on the gray pixels, and you can right click again on the dot to move it or to replace a green dot with a red one. For example, you could do that and backspace to remove the last added dot. So I'm going to add them again here, press space. Okay, it's having a bit of a hard time with this area. You don't want to waste too much time with areas like these because they're very easy to remove 
with a paintbrush in Krita afterwards. Same thing, don't be too worried about having a little bit of the background on the character. We are going to see how to clean that up with selection tools in a second. So you can press tab to cycle the preview modes and once you are satisfied with the image, you will press enter for the separation to occur in Krita. Now I can isolate my selected layer to see that we can't see the background anymore on this one. Under it, I'm going to create a new layer. You can click the plus button in the layer docker to do so and fill it with a background color from that palette. You can use the bucket fill tool, left click, so that way we can see the gray areas a little more clearly. I'm going to fill the full layer and select my character, my extracted picture again. Create a new group because we are going to add a transparency mask to it to refine the layer. Control click on the character to create a selection of all the pixels in that layer. Then with the group selected, go to the drop down menu next to the add layer button and add a transparency mask. With that, we can isolate that transparency mask. So right click and you go to isolate layer in the context menu. I've added a shortcut, a custom shortcut to go a bit faster as I use this feature all the time. And there we can soften our contour, remove a bit more of the gray that we have here, non-destructively. We're not going to directly erase from the picture. So what you want to do with the transparency mask selected, you're going to blur it. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a bit to show you what that does. I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and soften it a little bit. Anytime you can remove isolate uh, mode, isolating the view. I'm going to activate the filter again. Now it's okay, it's been blurred. And so with that, it soften the edge a little bit. We want to tighten it now. We don't really want the edge to be blurry. We want just to remove the extra gray around the hair and the forehead, the nose, etc. Clean it up a little bit. So to do that, you want to always with the transparency mask selected, use something like levels, or I personally like to use the color adjustment filter, control M to call it. And this one allows you to remap the levels of your image. What you can see here is that you have for a given input color on the x-axis, you're going to have a certain output. In simpler terms, if you create a point by clicking and dragging on the curve and you drag it down, you are going to make the blacks more prominent in your picture. So that's what I'm trying to do here. And I'm going to use that to tighten the edge quite a bit. So as I'm adjusting as I go, the result might not be super obvious, but if I toggle the preview on and off, you can see how my transparency mask is shrinking. Okay. Now I might want to add some more contrast in there. I'm going to create some kind of an S curve there to push the whites forward in the slightly gray area. A blur is in this case a gradient from black to white. I'm pushing the blacks and the grays towards one another, sharpening the edge a little bit. I'm going to press OK there and go out of isolation mode. You can see before we have a bit of gray in front of the forehead, the nose, etc. And with the mask on, it's looking a little better already. There are a few blobs left and there is always a little bit of manual work when you are extracting a character from a background, unless you have a green screen or something that's really designed to be easy to remove. I don't have that in my room right now. I'm going to manually clean up the remaining parts. For that, pick a nice brush, one that you like, one that's fairly sharp. And you want, with the transparency mask selected, to pick 
a pure black. We are going to do that with right click. We can go down the color selection triangle to get a black. Then you paint a little bit. You don't want to be too, too pretty about these kinds of jobs, especially if you know that the picture is going to be scaled down. This is going to be the case for me on YouTube. You can remove it uh, sometimes a bit sloppily. Sometimes you can even do things like sharpening the edges a little bit for an extra stylistic effect, for example. The reason I'm doing that and I'm going that fast is that I know that for most viewers on YouTube, the image will be about that size. That's the size of an avatar, for example, on social networks most of the time. And even if people are going to see the picture full screen, the final portrait should be about this size. And voila, I think that's well done. So you can use that technique to extract your photos from the background. The more complex the background, the more details that you have, the sharper it is, the less contrast you have on the image, the harder it will be. You will have to place more dots. But hopefully this can help you get the job started, get the job done much faster than trying to do the contour of your character by hand with selection tools. I hope this tutorial was useful. If so, be sure to subscribe for more, to leave some comments about what you'd like to see next. But for now, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun, let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.